All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, hi, how hey. are you all today? It's great to see you. This is the end of the summer reading program, so mm -hmm. we're just going to talk a little bit about summer reading and the start of school, and we're going to have a story. I mean, basically, is what we're doing. So, Miss Emily is here, and Miss Katie, and you've been seeing them somewhat this summer, right, on some of the videos and at some of the meal sites. They are going to talk a little bit about how much we all miss you, for one thing. We would love yes, to see yeah. you. Yes, we do. And about how many things are available at the library right now while we're in a very limited opening because of the pandemic. Yeah. So they can tell you a little bit about it. So okay. did you want to talk a little bit, Miss Emily, about what's coming to. up? Yes. So our regular programming for preschoolers is all online. We have baby time on Mondays. Story time Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And on Friday, we've been getting some pictures from the toys while they're on vacation. So that's at 10 o'clock in the morning. In the afternoons, we've had our craft bags out on Tuesday, and you've seen me doing a lot of crafts, and Miss Katie too, and sometimes Miss Eleni. And um, we'll have our last one tomorrow with some end of summer crafts that go with today's event. And then on Thursdays, we've put book bags out on the fence so that you can come and get some new books. And who doesn't love new books to read? I love new books. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as, as we transition to the school year, we're going to start something new. Oh, it's called a uh, fun, fun, fun Family Friday that I came up with the name of and I can't even remember it. <laughs> so what it is, it's gonna try to be something um, different than on Friday nights where you're just don't know what to do. You can't, you're limited as to where you can go and who you can see. So we're going to do um, family fun packs. They're going to have every week is going to be different. It's going to be something where families are going to try to work together and do something together. Some I'm thinking of some like some questionnaire games, maybe some trivia things. Um, our first one is all building. building this one is your favorite. Yeah, we're going to be building. Yeah, the first and one. And we want you to do these and then send us pictures. We want to see what you're doing because we don't see you anymore. And we would love to be able to see what you create, what you come up with. You know, really show us a picture with your family. Build when you have to build your thing that you made. And if you find other things in the house, you can add to make. To, we're going to send you a of little Of course, pitch. always, always you can add more things oh, yeah, or create please. more things yeah. or change it to yes. create it more We want to see what you're doing because we yes. miss you and we want to still see what you're doing. So we're going to do that on Fridays and that's about all we have right now. But we're hoping to come up with some more ideas as the school year rolls along. Yep. And have some of our regular parties yep. like the Pumpkin Palooza in October and the Stuffed Animal Sleepover in yep. November. Right. Right. So we will still, and you will still be able to attend and join in with, with us. Don't forget that you can check out all the books and videos that you want. Yep. You just have to get on the catalog and reserve them, or yes, and you can get books and videos delivered right outside to your car. If you're on Facebook and seeing us on Facebook, you can send us a Facebook message and say. Miss Katie, I would love to check out 15 books about horses today. Yep. And we can find them for you. Yeah, we'll right. pick it up. <laughs> you can still borrow books and videos, no problem. And of course, you can still use our ebooks, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And most of them, the people that have the school. Well, I Catch. You can write. and so other people can get them on their phones or their computers. You can get them on the school iPads, but we have lots of lots of people. So just remember, we have things going on. We have things for you to do. Don't forget the Friday craft bags. That'll be to come up with uh, events and stories and things that we can do online. Now, don't forget 
return in your summer reading sheet, right? Your summer reading sheet. We have lots of prizes here. Lots of prizes. So be sure to turn it in. We need to get rid of the prizes. Yeah, we need to get rid of the prizes. Okay. We so don't count. want them. Yeah, we don't want them. Well, hardly, hardly any of them. Maybe some. Maybe some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But yeah, so. So anyway, we don't want all the prizes. Yeah. No. So please turn in your summer reading sheets. Growing up that did the bingo, turn that in because there's a drawing, prize drawing for grown-ups too yes. for the bingo. The cutoff will be right as school begins. So make sure you bring those to the drop box or come while we're open from 11 to 3 and uh, let us know and you can yeah. pick out your prizes. Yeah, you can definitely just put them in the drop box, mail it to us, you know, you want to take a picture and send it to us on email, go right ahead, you know, well, you know, works too. we'll come up with a way if you send us the sheet to get you some prizes, all right? Yeah. During the school year, right? 20 minutes a day, how do we maintain our skills? By practice. Yes. Right? Practice. You have to do is read something you like to read. So yes. it's no problem. You can easily practice reading. Yeah. So, oh, the to mention was I ran into somebody who said they, they said, I have 40 books that I need to return. And putting 40 books in that book drop is going to be tedious. So, so what you can need to return, <laughs> just let us know, and we'll open up our where our books go, and you can just dump them right in the big bin. You don't, because so, our books get quarantined. Yes, we keep them for four days before we check them in. Right. So you know, obviously, right? Don't forget, we're in a pandemic here. Yep. You can see we're all wearing masks. <laughs> And one of the things that does go on is the books are quarantined so that the virus dies before yes. any of the staff picks up the book again. Yeah, we don't want to touch your books. So we're right. So yeah, so we don't want to touch your books. And not, not until they've been quarantined. So that's why we really want them returned in the book drop. Yeah. And then by the time the books get back out to you, of course, they've been quarantined yep. again by being on the shelf so that the items that go out to you are actually very safe. They've been through the quarantine process and we are very careful here with uh, hand oh, washing yeah. and our mask wearing, right? Mask wearing, so, yes. So, yeah, so, yeah. Got my so, Lorax on. Right, she has her Lorax on today. <laughs> I just have kitties. I have my mm -hmm. kitties on today, so. That's okay. Um, but anyway, so just, you know, just for you, we are still here to serve you. We are happy to, to come up with all kinds of uh, books and videos if you need ideas. Again, we're coming up with it. The only in a pandemic, right? Everyone is here together trying to protect others from being infected. And that's what we're all about. Everyone working together. See you. Thank you for coming and thank you for all your hard work protecting other people from illness. Thank you so much. How about a story? Sounds good. Okay. Everyone ready? Yeah. Okay. Miss Katie and Miss Emily are going to uh, move away from me so I can take off my mask to read the story. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, favorites? many years some of you might have had to see me uh, read it before but I just like it a lot okay <laughs> I want to read it again so it is Harvey Potter's balloon farm or are written and published before Harry right so Harvey Potter's balloon by Mark Peter so love the balloons this, again, like I said, it's a big favorite book of mine. I just love this story. Harvey Potter was a very strange fellow indeed. He was a farmer, but he didn't farm like my daddy did. He farmed a genuine U.S. government inspected balloon farm. No one knew exactly how he did it. Some folks say that it wasn't real. That it was magic. But I know what I saw, 
And those were real actual balloons growing out of the plain old ground. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can see all the colors back there in the background. <gasps> there they are. Look at those. Balloons are growing out of the ground. Harvey Potter had some of the prettiest colors you'd ever want to see on a balloon. Please and purple, orange ray sun, yellow and yellow. Bloom and blue and grassy green. All kinds of shapes too. Brown blooms, long ones. Animal shapes. Oh my. Monster blooms with his and great big sharp teeth in time for Halloween. Those are fantastic balloons. I tell you, Harvey Potter was a strange fellow, all right. To look at him, he was quite plain. Never wore nothing to draw attention to himself. His hair was kept close overalls with a shirt. Underneath were him. what wasn't so plain about him was the conjure stick oh, he carried with him wherever he was mostly he just carried it under his arm. Hmm. I like his truck full of balloons there. It was Weasel Mayfield who called the government on. So the government came out to Harvey Potter's balloon farm bright and early. Old town turned out for them. And though nobody said what they thought, we all held our breath, hoping we could keep our balloons. We never knowed how to grow nothing but trees, maple, sycamore, pine, oak, and regular kinds of stuff. Harvey Potter balloons and no one knew what he used for seed. <laughs> I've never found balloon seed at the store. I've looked. Never, never found it. Okay. The government men were standing around in white coats and white hats and white gloves. They kept us so far back we could hardly see, but I climbed right up in the sycamore tree and saw everything. There she is right there. They pulled and they poked, and finally, they tricked one of those plants with a pin. And what was supposed to happen? Dead. The balloon popped. Even they, it's a balloon all right. So they gave Harvey Potter the right to grow balloons. He never asked them for it, mind you. But he took it anyway, just to be polite. Let me tell you, it made everybody happy. Well, almost everybody. Weasel was sore. Uh, there's, there's just always some grumpy people around, aren't there? Not always. Now, I had quite an interest in Harvey Potter's balloon farm, and I decided I was going to get to know him. He didn't seem to mind. In fact, he let me get to know him right good. I'd bring him lemonade or sit on his porch and swing in his swing. But he never would confide in me uh, about how he grew those balloons. I didn't pry. After a while, I just liked going around him. He didn't ask why you weren't this or that. He just let a person be. He let a person sit and think out loud sometimes. And, well, that's a mighty good thing to do. He just let a person be. He likes you just the way you are. Yeah. Still, something in me was a hankering to know. So I decided I was just going to go out there in the nighttime. That was when he did his field work. I told you he was strange. That is unusual doing your field work at night. 
to this day, I am indebted to that sycamore tree and to that big old moon. It was as full as it was wide that night. I saw him the second he opened his door. Plain as day. So on his front porch, he was where the fields were. That conjure stick was under his arm. He just stood there, eyes staring straight ahead at something off yonder ways. Then he come down off that porch. Step, step. His steps all seemed so big and so loud. It must have been his heavy field shoes. He walked down to the field and without a sign of warning, commenced a howler. The next thing I knew, he started dancing and prancing with that stick held out in front of him like it was his dancing partner. Then that stick started to glow color and stood up directly on its own. And when it rose up into the air, Harvey Potter rose up right along with him. The two of them were making some mighty fine footwork six feet or so off the ground. They were a floating and a bobbing. Why, it appeared as if the two of them had turned into glowing balloons themselves. Altogether, it was a very strange sight, even stranger. Harvey Potter dropped back down to the earth, grabbed hold of that stick and waved it round over his head. He whooped and he hollered and he yelled as he carried on so. to say I was almighty scared. I would have jumped right down and run for home, but my eyes were just plain rude to Harvey Potter. Then Harvey let go of that stick and it started to bounce and float over the field, dropping down, down here and there in night. And all the while Harvey Potter just kept a whooping and a screeching. All of a sudden that stick came into a complete back. That's when Harvey Potter stopped screeching. He turned around and looked directly up at that sycamore tree. I thought for sure he saw me, but I guess not because he turned back on around and went into his house. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he saw her. Look at all those balloons they planted. Look at that. I climbed down and, uh, and fell off to sleep waiting. In the morning when I woke up, wet with dew and shivering cold, little bitty colored mounds were popping up all over the ground. When I ran back after supper time, they had all come up in the sun. I tell you, it was a sight. Look at all those tiny little balloons coming up. Harvey Potter saw me out there in his fields admiring his latest crop of balloons. He said I could take as many as I wanted. I took three. Now, I couldn't resist the jelly bean black one. I didn't touch his monster ones on account of they were just too plain scary. Oh, those were times. Harvey Potter went right on growing the best, prettiest balloons this side of anywhere. And we never heard him again either. So Mayfield, he was so riled up over the fun we were having with our balloons, he packed up and moved off to parts unknown. There he goes. Maybe he's heading for the storm clouds. Seems to suit his mood a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> on 
I remember those days well. It was the summer of fifth. I was hankering to leave home myself to find out what the world had to offer. Harvey Potter grew me a balloon that was big enough to carry me off. That's how I landed in this place here. I never did go back home and never did want to. This place here was just right for me. Look at that. He grew her a giant balloon so she could fly off and make her way in the world. These days I farm, and I am not one to brag, but I have a second crop of balloons. Now, I don't grow mine the exact same way as Harvey Potter does on account of I am not Harvey Potter. I have my own methods. Maybe I'll show you someday. She's pulling them out of the ground. All right. Thank you for being good listeners. Keep reading, right? Good job. Bye-bye.